In this video, I'm going to show you how to master Lightburn's move commands. My name is Gil, and in part one of this series, we learned all about Lightburn's set laser position on page tool, as well as creating save positions for instant setup of your work. Now I'm going to show you what you need to know to set up those one-off projects quickly and accurately. Let's go. Because I spent a lot of time using the next feature that I want to share with you guys. And I'm sure that this is one that a lot of people are familiar with. And that happens to be the, the jog keys. I want to get the right, right name for these. And this is the jog keys right here. So these are the main way that people move the, the laser head around the machine. You have a number of keys. You have a, for all intents and purposes, move Y plus. I'm going to call that up. Y down. We've also got left and right. Um, you also have this one here, which is a move axis positive. So if you had a rotary tool, you'd be able to move it in the positive, And this one's in the negative, as well as a up and down, which is move Z positive or Z negative, which in this case actually moves the laser head now I'll just move it down a little bit here and I'm going to move it up here so you can see exactly what's going on. So let me home it. That's what this button right here says. It will allow you to home the laser. And I'm going to go through all the different things that you can actually do with these jog keys. So most people know this. You hit the, let's say if you want to move the, the laser head to the right, you move it to the right. You want to move it down, you move it to the down. And what people will do was constantly just hit that button using your mouse and you're like okay so i'm getting there closer you know how many people have done that i mean you know that that is how people use a light burn in a in when they're setting up their jobs and that's okay but let me show you a few little tricks here that make things a little easier on the other side you have distance you have speed you also have Z speed, which is obviously the up and down of the uh, laser itself. And in this case, this is the focusing. I don't touch that because that happens to be where the laser assembly is. And just for generic language, we're calling the whole thing the, the laser head. This is where the burning and the magic happens. This is where the magic smoke may escape from the work that you're working on. You don't want that coming at magic smoke coming out of the electronics bay. And in this case, we can actually change these settings. So by default, it's on 10 mil, and you can see I'm moving twice uh, to the right. Then we're gonna go two down, two left, and two up. So you can actually see right there exactly what's going on when it comes to moving it. And that distance is 10 mil. Let's make it 100 mil. Let's see what happens. I'm gonna hit this twice. One, two. Almost traveled all the way to the end. We're going to do this for just one. We're going to do one, two, and we'll go back one up. So you can see we've actually increased that distance. So if you happen to have a piece of work or, you know, you 10 mil is you're just sick and tired of hitting that button, you can increase it. You don't have to do it 100. You could just do it 50. And that already has, will change. There's one, two. We're moving it. We're doing, we'll do, do it in twos. And you can change it to whatever setting you want. So even if you're dialing something in really, really tight, you can actually make this one. And at one mil, you can see it's just moving incre incredibly small increments at a time. And that's cool. You know what? Maybe you're setting up a print and cut. Maybe you're trying to dial in the laser to start on one of your marks and make it precise. I know that I've done that many times and I've come in here and I've changed the distance so that I can make sure that I have got it on a perfect uh, starting point. Because you want to make sure those cuts work out. When you put in so much time with the design and with the, with whatever you've printed out, you want to make sure that it's going to work every time. Now, the second one is speed. And on the Emblazer 2, you can actually change the speed. It comes standard at, at 6,000 mil per second. And again, you can see... Actually, you can see... I'm going to change this to 50. And you can see it the actual constant speed ramping. All right, so let's change this. Let's double it because my machine likes to scream. And I mean scream, I mean scream. So let's check this out. I'm going to hit that move X. 
and you can see how much faster it's moving. Okay, it didn't scream as much. Let's move the distance to a 100, though. Let's see. There you go. It, start, it starts to squeak a bit. Because it's just... It's moving. It can do it, but I... I hear that sound. I don't know if you guys can hear it or not, but I kind of take that sound as, Gil, just be nice to me. You can go faster. One of the things that this actually changes is the home speed and the frame speed. So let's frame this. And there you go. You can see the frame is actually moving at 12,000. And again, I hope you guys could hear the grind. It's not grinding. It's just you putting a little bit more torque on those uh, mounts. So I'm going to change it back to 6,000. I'm going to hit that frame again. And you can see it's a lot smoother. And again, I wouldn't really move the speed too much, especially when you're doing a job because you don't want you you want it to be smooth. You don't want it to be to jog either way. And you don't want to put too much pressure on those belts. So again, that's a, a way of being able to kind of speed up your setup if you feel comfortable doing it. I generally don't change the speed, but I do change the distance. And that is one way of being able to, you know, set up your stuff a little bit better. Oh, hey, there you are. I didn't mean to interrupt this video, but I did want to take a moment out to ask you to hit that subscribe button and that bell icon so you don't miss out on any other laser videos and tutorials that are coming up. And if you love lasers and making things, you have an invitation to come along to the laser live streams that we run every two weeks on this channel. It's a great place where you get to share the work that you've created and even share some of the magic you've learned along the way. But right now, I want to get back to this because I've got a lot more to learn and share with you and that's going to come up real soon. So you know what? I'll see you soon and let's get back to the video. Now, there is a kind of like a power point when it comes to using these jog arrows. And in this case, you can actually use the keys here in combination with both the shift key and the control key. Now, if you're using a Mac like me, it's not the control key, but the command key that does it. But if you hold it over here, you can see it says control small steps and shift big steps. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna move this back to 10 and I'm gonna, sh I'm gonna home it just so you know that nothing's changed. I'm gonna use the laser setup or the or basically laser position. I'm going to move right to the middle. How cool is that? I used to have to hit that button like 20 times, right? And then from here, I'm going to just show you. I'm going to hit twice up, twice right, twice down, twice to the left, just so you can see visually what it does. So we're going normally, that's two up. We'll do it three. Three to the side, three down and three to the left. Now I'm gonna hold down the shift key. Let's show you what happens when I do that. One, two. We're gonna go two to the right, two down, and two to the left. So that's a fast way of increasing that distance without having to go in here and actually changing the, the numbers. I don't know what, what it's set to. I'm assuming from the look of it, it's around 50 mil. But again, if your laser head happens to be homed and you want to move down quickly, hold down your shift key and just move your, your laser head as far as you want. And I'm going to just home it again. I'm going to show you how to get that to move very, very quickly. So let's move within almost two. That's three. I'm in the middle. One, two, three. I'm going to need a few more here. All right. So there you go. I've actually got it approximately in the same area I had before. A lot faster than having to go moving it 10 mil at a time. Now, if you happen to be doing a print or cut, or maybe you've got a piece of um, material that you want to do a finishing part on, maybe you've got to have it in the exact position, you may want to move your laser head in an exact position before you start your job. I get it. Or maybe you want to check where that position is within Lightburn, it's compared to your machine. The other option that you have is the control option, and that actually moves the laser head in almost like a mill in a very small area. Now, as it says, it says control here. If you're on the Mac, it's command. So I'm gonna do two, three to the left, 
Three up. Three to the right. And three down. So there you go. I Again, if you want to move that laser head in very small, minute amounts so that you can dial in exactly what it is that you want to do, this is a great way of doing it. Just using the shift key and the control key allows you a lot of latitude to make sure that your laser head is in the perfect position. And just to show you the differences, I'm going to do one whole circuit at the normal. So this is, we're not holding anything down. So we're going to go up one. We're going to go left one. Sorry, that's right one. Down one, left one. Do that again. Up, right, down, left. I'm now going to hold the shift key. That's one up, one to the right, one down, one to the left. We'll do one more. Up, right, down, left. And now I'm holding the control key. On my Mac, it's the command key. That's one, two, three up, one, two, three to the right, one, two, three, and one, two, three. So there you go. Three ways that you're able to move your laser head around to get the perfect positioning for your jobs whether you use the tool and actually click on and move the laser head around whether you use the get position dial in your numbers in the position and hit go or take a save position and move the jog position into the area so you can do it multiple times or you use these move keys to move the laser head around and then using the shift or control you can make big jumps or small jumps to make sure that you've got it all in the right place and that's it all you need to know in lightburn so that you can spend more time cutting and less time setting up your jobs with these features mastered and at your call you'll be creating your pieces faster and in no time Want to learn more about light burn and laser cutting and engraving? Check out these videos right here. That's where they are. And hit that subscribe button and so you don't miss out on our next video. Until then, stay safe and go make something amazing. We'll see you soon.